immediately following B Expo artist Dougie Fresh, we have controversial pastor. Pastor Gino Jennings. Mm -hmm. He has a lot to say about women. We will talk to him in four minutes. Keep it locked right here to the Quincy Harris Morning Show with Kate Fox. Good morning, y'all. Put me up. It's the Quincy Harris Morning Show with Kate Fox. K. I've been, I've been, I've been waiting for this. I've been like, this is like a dream come true. Tell me why. Uh, because we we have Pastor Gino Jennings here. He's a pastor um, from Philadelphia. He's made headlines, but I'm, I'm hearing this message has, is not new to him. Uh, I'm gonna play, I'm gonna play two clips from Pastor Gino Jennings. This is uh, Pastor Gino Jennings, uh, one of his sermons. Flapping your ankle chains around, all on the choir, breasts hanging out, lips all red, nails painted red, purple, blue, green, long like bird claws, all this fake hair, breast implant, toenails painted with little fake diamonds in it. Your toes ain't richer. You're nothing but a prostitute. Okay. So that yes. Our phone number is 215-515-3481, just Please to let people us. know. It's 215-515. 515 that But we have more. This is uh, more from Pastor uh, Gino Jennings. His wife out in the street looking like a prostitute. And you a holy woman or claim you's a Christian? Christian with skin tight pants. Going to some church with the shape of your birth canal exposed in public and jeans all up the back side of your behind. Okay. <laughs> we have Pastor Gino Jennings here. How you doing, sir? I'm very well. Thanks for having me. Your message yes, has sir. been uh has it been misconstrued? Is it sounds a little a little uh harsh, wouldn't you say? No, I wouldn't say. Okay. Uh basically what someone did, it took an excerpt. Okay. About a two or three minute excerpt of a closing year service. Um, but if someone would have heard the whole message then it would have clarity of exactly what I was saying. What I was dealing with is the condition that the churches are in now. When I came up, I was told that the church is supposed to be a light to the sinner. The church is not a light to the sinner. The sinner has become a light to the church. And this is why if you look at church today, church mimic the sinner. And a lot of sinners don't have no respect for church because of that. Because when they go to the club and to the party, the same one that's in church is at the club. So this is exactly what I'm talking about. Now, you say some stuff about women wearing, you know, mm -hmm. tight pants and yes. that they wear, you know, claws. Uh, <laughs> bird claws. Bird claws. Yes. That they're, um, was, was the word whores or, or prostitutes? Both. Or? Again, if you listen at the whole message, okay. it isn't because they wear it is what make them a whore or prostitute. I'm dealing with the appearance. Okay. If you look at a prostitute or a stripper, Someone in the church should not be looking like a stripper. You should be able to look at a church person and look at a stripper and not get them mixed and, and not get them mixed up as being the same thing. Pastor Gino Jennings, um, do you have a favorite stripper here uh, from Philadelphia? Oh no, I don't deal with strip clubs. <laughs> okay, all right, all right. Just... But I came up in the hood. Okay, wh where'd you grow up? I grew up in Huntington Park. Okay. And brother, in Huntington Park, everything walked the streets. So it isn't like what I'm speaking to have uh, it's something that I haven't seen coming up. Um, you can see the strippers and the prostitutes walking the streets and you see sometime uh, people that go to church stop and picking them up. So the church is no longer a light uh, to the center world. You can do the same thing in church as you do before you claim you're saved. What about church starting from within and being non-judgmental? about people that do want to find the word of God, but you're mm -hmm. judging them from their appearance. Uh, uh, basically, whenever you tell someone about themselves, right away someone throw a judgmental card. If an individual uh, is dressing inappropriately. According to who? According to morals and according to biblical principle. See, a lot of people don't even know that the Bible even speaks of makeup. They say you're making it up. The Bible speaks of makeup. The Bible speaks of jewelry. The Bible speaks of modesty. 
So it isn't something that's made up. It's a true fact. So I have on makeup. I have on lip gloss. So what would what would be your it, assessment of me uh, as a woman? My assessment wouldn't be anything. But okay. from a biblical perspective, in the fourth chapter of the book of Jeremiah, it plainly states, When thou art spoiled, what wilt thine do? Though thou rentest thine face with paint and deck yourself with ornaments of gold, the scripture says, In vain do you make yourself fair. I don't believe uh, from a biblical perspective that a woman have to wear makeup and fake hair to be beautiful. And this is one of my arguments. Uh, the women have been commercialized in such a way until they feel as though their hair is not good enough for them, so they want to buy some. The way God made them isn't good enough for them, so they want to put on lipstick and all this other thing. I'm a firm believer that God's creation is naturally beautiful. Beauty so don't come in the them, box. So that now, equates them to being a prostitute or a whore. Now, yeah, now Pastor Gino Jennings, let's, mm -hmm. you know, the, the most sensational things, you know, out of, you know, the things that made, you know, made you go viral. Are mm -hmm. you saying, you know, women, you look like whores, you look like prostitutes. Do, do you think those words were too harsh that you used? <clears throat> no. Okay. Old folks used to say it this way. Mothers used to tell their daughters, don't go out here looking like Jezebel. Have you ever heard that statement? Yes. Do you know how the Bible describes Jezebel? Please break it down for us. In 2 Kings, the ninth chapter, the Bible speaks about Jezebel. She painted her face. It was a certain attire. In the book of Proverbs, it clearly is distinguished between, it says, the attire of a harlot. But then in the New Testament, in the book of Timothy, it talks about women adorning yourselves in modest apparel. There is a difference between the attire of a harlot and modest apparel. There's nothing modest about a woman in the street, half naked. Uh, these leggings that women wear, they wear them to church. <laughs> but I mean, doesn't church also say, come as you are? No. <laughs> the Bible ain't never said that. Uh, no, I'm just saying, as a church, as you know, don't you want people to come as they yes. are right now? Yes, say they if do. They're, say if they're trying to change their life and they yes. have makeup on and they mm -hmm. have tights on. Can we, we welcome go them. like this? Yes. Yes, you can. Okay. Yes, we welcome them. But when you come as you are. That doesn't mean that you stay as you are. No, we didn't say that. But see, this is my, well, this is what I'm saying. Churches today, it isn't just come as you are. It's stay as you are. You can go into any church, practically 99.9 .9 of churches, and you will see more naked females. Our brothers got their pants hanging down, showing their underwear. This is church. This is what church has become now. Okay. Well, so it should be a difference between what you wear in the street and clubbing and partying in what you wear in church. So society says it's normal just to be naked. It's normal to look that way. No, it is not. We have Pastor Gino Jennings here. Would you like to talk to him? He thinks you're a prostitute. He thinks you're a whore. <laughs> Give them a call, 215-515-3481. That's 215-515-3481. I think sometimes some of the words you use are a little harsh. Mm -hmm. You got to reach the people the way you got to reach them. But how, how can you reach people if, they, if you want them to change if you're... Well, let me say this. I must say, uh, some criticize my language. But the language I'm using is in the Bible. The Bible says, do not prostitute thine daughter to call her to be a whore. I didn't say anything that's not in the Bible. We have Pastor Gino Jennings here, right here on the Quincy Harris Morning Show with K-Fox. Keep it locked. It is 814. We'll take your calls coming up next. We have uh, Pastor Gino Jennings in here. It's the Quincy Harris Morning Show with K-Fox. It is 824. K. Yeah, I have, I have a few questions for the Pastor. People are calling right now. Okay. 215-515-3481. 215-515-3481. People have questions. I believe we have Gina from North Philly. Uh, what is your question? What, what do you have to say to Pastor Jennings? That was that was ter oh, that's the name I just erased. I'm sorry, that was Teresa. I thought she already did it. I know. That's just supposed to lead as, as example, or by example, right? Yes. However, there are ways to approach the situation. You are really, really harsh. But I understand. I understand because, you know, the Bible does say it's going to be a great falling away from the church. A lot of people have fell away because of the way people are acting in the church and looking and dressing and, you know, doing all kinds of things. Even pastors themselves are going the wrong route, you know, doing worldly and ungodly things and still come to church and, and preach on that pulpit. And that's supposed to be sacred. That's God's sanctuary. Mm -hmm. That's holy ground. 
You know what I mean? That's supposed to be holy ground. So you, I mean, you're not wrong. And I give my take my hat off to you, and I say kudos. Keep on leading by example. We have Tino from North Philly. You actually attend uh, Pastor Gino's uh, church, correct? Yes, I do. And it is nothing the pastor says that's not in the Bible. And it's the strict language that he used that brought me to his attention about 15 years ago. I don't need my religion sugarcoated. I need to be my maker knowing what I need to know about how to be acceptable in his eyes. I don't want scripture redone. And this is why I left a lot of other churches. Now, I'm not critical of other people. I do believe that everything that the pastor says is supported by the Bible, unlike every other church that I have visited throughout my life. We have Teresa from Southwest Philly. Teresa, how you doing? I'm fine. Yeah, we have Pastor Gino Jennings in here. Yes, I was just listening on the radio, and I kind of really got offended about his, the way he's relaying that women are prostitutes and whores the way they're dressed. My, my, my um, question is, what about the men? Because I was raised in Germantown, Huntington Park, and yes, it's been all over. It's been back in the decade. But he's taking parts out the Bible to be little women, and he's supposed to be a pastor. I would never attend his church because deep down, what about the Catholic Church, the molestation, the men? What about the men? He ain't say nothing about the men, and I don't want to cuss. But I, it's really making me offended the way he's talking about women and the way they're dressed and the way they're, they're lips and this and this and that. Why are you so worried about that? If you're trying to get the word, get the f the word and just oh, worry oh, about oh, that. Oh, he's a, but listen, sister, can I address what you just said? Because yeah. I, I don't disagree with you. I agree with you 100%. But again, it's just a segment of the mm -hmm. message that's being played. But if you heard the entire message, I am addressing the men. In fact, I'm very adamant about the condition of our men. And some men say that I'm too harsh on them. Okay, thank you. Thank you I think for she calling. meant stereotyping. Yeah. Uh, Pastor. Yes, sir. Do you, did, were you always like this? You grew up, you said you, you grew up in North Philly. Yes. You grew up in Hunting Park. Mm hmm Were you always, you know, this way? Just straightforward? No, not, not even this straightforward. Were, were you always, you know, a man of, of God? Were you this strict to the Bible growing up? I was raised up in a very disciplined home. Okay. Very down-to-earth home, though. Eight of us. And, uh, a lot of people think love is just when you're passive. They have like a one inside interpretation of love. When I was coming up, and my father took that belt and took it to my behind because I was hard head. I felt as though he didn't love me. But as I got older and understood the value of what he was doing, I understood that love have a broader scope. So when you tell people direct and what they may call rigid, right away they say you're not loving or you're not expressing the love of Christ. And I totally disagree with such. Do you have any kids? Oh, yes. I have seven. Four oh. boys and three girls. Man. What do your daughters think about what you say about women? Or do they agree with you? Yes, they do. And they don't agree with me because I'm their father. I believe they should be an independent thinker. But I also don't want my daughters out here with walking the street with tights on and a halter just so men can walk around or drive by and bump their horn at them and whistle at them. So is it their fault or is it the men's fault for sexualizing them? It is the nature of a man to be attracted to a woman who hardly have anything on. Tights and a halter top? Yes. Uh, let's let's be so real. Who's, let's, so then, I'm just trying to think. If I choose to dress today and have on a tights okay. and a halter you, top, and a man up. honks at me, it's my fault. It's the fault of both. If you dressed in a way, you don't believe that a woman can dress in a way that can lure a man to him. That's just like saying if a woman puts on a tight dress, she deserves to get raped. No, that is not saying that. Yeah. Because regardless of what a person wear, they don't deserve to get raped. But at the same time, let me make this example. Please. There are some men that drive a, a very fashionable car and look a certain way. And sometimes that look attracts certain women. There are certain looks that a woman can have on that make her appear that attract certain men. That's just a fact. You go buy a car because you're attracted to the look, even if you don't know the engine, how it works. But that doesn't mean that it's our fault. So what, what's the proper dress for women? <laughs> I'm just saying from, from, a past, from Pastor Jenny. Well, never like, mind for me. From a biblical perspective, okay. the biblical term is modesty. So, and modesty, when you're dressed modest, you're not half naked. The Bible says that the shame of your nakedness not appear. 
Say if your daughter says, with three of your daughters, they, they come home and they say, Daddy, they in straight A's. And so I don't know how old your daughters are. They come my home. oldest daughter is uh, 27. My okay. second one is 25. And my third one is about 20. I can see you smiling. About when you, when you, when you, when you, yeah. She's like 19. Hard for, me to keep, hard for me to keep up with all my numbers. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> your daughters come home. Yes, they sir. say, Daddy, I just got straight A's in college. And I want to go see Rihanna or Beyonce mm-hmm. go perform. Yeah. Do you give them the money to go to this concert? And, you know, sometimes Beyonce and Rihanna are dressed in certain ways mm-hmm. that you may not agree with. No, I wouldn't. No, I wouldn't. I look at our young kids today. They use celebrities as examples. And they feel as though if I don't look like this celebrity, I'm not beautiful. What's wrong with the way God made you? What's wrong with the texture of your hair? What's wrong with the color of your hair? What's wrong with the shape of your lips? What's wrong with the complexion of your skin? You mean to tell me that God who's all-knowing, who's infallible, and who's perfect in everything he does, he done made a mess in his creation? Beauty is something you don't buy in a carton. Beauty don't come at your house in Amazon. And beauty is not something you go to the store and buy in a jar. Beauty is not only outwardly, but beauty is also the conduct, how we conduct ourselves. So because, and again, on the flip side, you can have a person that go to church and dress modest and everything and be the worst devil walking. Mm-hmm. So I believe in both. I believe that if an individual is going to be in church and represent Christ, I mean represent Christ. Some folks say, well, it's, it's not outward. It's both. It's out and in. And if you look at the Bible, the Bible actually deals with both outside and inside. Imagine me a preacher. I'm walking around smoking. Imagine me a preacher walking around flirting with women. Imagine me a bling bling preacher. Rings on every finger and necklaces hanging around my neck. You would think I'm a pimp. Now I can see you didn't have any rings on your fingers. No, I don't wear them. Are you married? Oh, yeah. Yes, I am. How long have you been married? I've been married now for 28 get it, years. Get it right. And all of your, and your, the same mom? Oh, yes. Kids? Oh, yes. No, I don't have no children outside of me and my wife. What do the women in ministry think about your word? Different women have... You know, in our ministry? No, just... Oh, at uh, large? Women that are also ministers and pastors. We'll get that question. We'll get that question okay. answered at 843. All right. It is 833. Keep it locked right here to the Quincy Harris Morning Show. Pastor Gino Jennings, he's not going anywhere. You want to talk to him? 215-515-3481. That's 215-515-3481. Keep it locked right here to the Quincy Harris Morning Show with K Fox on 100.3 WRMB. We have Pastor Gino Jennings here. Uh, if you've never heard of his church, he says some controversial things. He's looking at me like, no, it's not controversial. It is just the word of God. Let's take a, this is a clip from his sermon. Okay. his wife out in the street looking like a prostitute. And you a holy woman or claim you a Christian? Christian with skin tight pants. Going to some church with the shape of your birth canal exposed and He must have really been looking if he saw all those details. Wow. <laughs> the look he just gave you. Wow, this hold, is very descriptive. Hold, hold, hold one second. Birth canal. And Give us a call. Backside. 215-515-3481. I'm not, first of all, I'm not a Christian. And but I, just, I think everybody's upset with his tone and how he speaks bluntly. And I think it, it, it's, it, it need, we need to change anyway. Everybody wants the same old thing and everybody keeps making excuses. But come as you are, you can't keep doing the same thing and expecting different results. So I agree with the brother. And I think that everybody's just worried about his tone and how he speaks. And like the brother said, review the whole thing. Don't just look at uh, a, a, a little part of it. Listen to the whole speech. Or go there and find out about it. Gotcha. Thank you, Tom. Thank you for calling. All right, yeah. We have John from North Philly. John, how you doing? Hey, I'm doing wonderful, man. Uh, QDZ, a.k.a. Quincy Harris. Morning. What's what's going on? Uh, nothing's going on. I just want to commend you, first of all, for having Brother Gino on. A lot of people won't touch it. I mean, he's been going viral for 23 years. This ain't nothing new. His story is not changing. It's the same. It's the same. And he's been saying this for 20-something years. 
He's been going viral for 20-something years, and I agree with him wholeheartedly. The church is, is, is messed up, so... Well, thank I just commend... Go ahead. No, no, no. What are you going to say? I said, I just commend Gino for just sticking to that script for all these years, because he's been getting ridiculed for all these years. He's been getting shut down for all these years, and his story is not changing. Our communities are getting worse and worse because these fly-by-night churches are getting this paper. Give me the loop. Give me the loop. And ain't nothing changing. Ain't nothing changing. And I just I just love Gene O'Dennis. I just don't go there because I know it requires a lot of change. And I ain't ready. Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, thank you for calling, John. Thank you for your honesty. We have Rosalie from North Philly. What's up, Rosalie? Oh, good morning, Kill. How you doing? Hey, how you doing? We have Pastor Jennings here. Good morning. Yeah. Because he told me his words are harsh, but you know how harsh hell is? You better get to know it. I mean, even when I was a whore before I was saved, I knew how to come to church to dress. Okay, what what, I knew. what, what, what we gotta uh, yeah, what, what uh qualifies you for being a, a former whore? I I think everybody I was, in the... I was a whore. I was in the street doing things that I shouldn't be doing, wearing things to get the attention from men who meant me no good. But I, I would still stumble in the church, you know, for some, well, I know what the reason was, but once I got to church, and because I can't change, the only the Holy Spirit can change you. Mm -hmm. So if you go to a church and the Holy Spirit is not there, you will remain the same. So you can come as you are. A church is a hospital for sick people. So when you go to the hospital, you get well. So if the Holy Spirit is not in the place where you worship, you won't get well. So you need the Holy Spirit to change you, to make you not want to look like a whore or a harlot when you go to church. Well, you want to present yourself to God, not to a, a man in the street, a trick in the street. You present yourself to God. So you dress accordingly. But the Holy Spirit can change you. Pastor needs to give harsh words to people. You know how harsh hell is going to be? Gotcha. Well, thank you, Rosalie. And we're you're glad, welcome. And we're glad you're not a whore anymore. <laughs> But no it more. used to be one. Yep. Believe it. But the Holy Spirit changed you, me. Thank you very much. You're welcome. All right. We have Evie from Yaden. What's going on, Evie? Hi, Mr. Harris. How are you? Amazing. We have Pastor Gino Jennings here. Yes, and I heard Thomas that he was making a good morning, Pastor Jennings. Good morning to you. Good morning. Okay, now let me ask you this, if you don't mind. Yes, ma'am. Um, in the Bible, God states, come as you are, right? No. So, no. Can I okay. interject? Th I didn't no cut you off. Wait a minute, please. Okay. Be little, you know, yes, ma'am. Show ma little respect, okay? Now, I'm just asking you. Do, do you see, like, where, where I'm trying to go? Mm -hmm. If somebody has a pair of jeans and they don't have a dress, or somebody pants and sag. Okay, for instance, an inmate might just come home from prison when it comes to your church. Mm -hmm. They give him a brown inmate jacket. And they, they say, you know what, I want to get my soul saved. I've never been living right. I want to come to Christ. If that's all that man has to wear to church, and he comes up in your church, you're going to refuse and tell him he can't come here because he's just getting out of prison? No, you accept him as he is. Because you don't know who you're passing by according to what you see in your eyesight. That's judgmental. And God didn't judge anyone. First of all, we don't turn no one away when they come to church, regardless of what they have on. Uh, and from that perspective, that's not even what I'm dealing with. That's not, uh, that's not what I was dealing with even when I was teaching. What I'm dealing with is the way our women look today who already claim they're saved. We're not dealing with anyone who only have one piece of clothing to wear. The stage of the churches today, if you go into churches, regardless of practically any church, a Christian woman and a woman that's not saved are not supposed to look the same, act the same, be the same. The Bible speaks plain. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things have passed away. So if old things have passed away, not only my character changed, but my appearance should change. Explain to me why would any decent woman want to walk the street with her breasts hanging out? Why is it all right to do? Why would any decent woman want to walk the streets with shorts? So short, everything in the shorts is out the shorts. What is so decent about it? To have your 10-year-old daughter, your 12-year-old daughter, your 13-year-old daughter looking like a prostitute. What is so decent about it? 
What is so decent about the women half naked in the club and you come into church and they look the same way on the choir, on the uh, playing the instruments, being ushers? What is so decent about it? You mean to tell me we're living in a society that's upset with me because I'm encouraging our women to put clothes on? That's the height of ignorance. A lot of women are calling in and they're mad because they're like, you're only going at, and I know you, you talked about this earlier, you touched it earlier. Mm -hmm. What what do the men, what, what do you say about the men and their appearance and how they act? I am very adamant about the men when it comes down to respecting the women. We believe that the man should respect the woman. Do not verbally abuse the woman. And don't, by any means, beat the woman. You can't even stay in our church if you're physically beating your woman. We believe that you should be arrested. And you should be locked up. If you're going to have a child by a woman, have enough decency to take care of the child. Most of our young men today, they're making babies. But it's not even in them. It's not, they act like it's not even in their character to take care of what they have. So a lot of these women are what? They are single mothers. And they have become mother and father. And yet these type of men, many of them, still go to church. And these type of issues are not being addressed Period. So no, we encourage our brothers, by all means, don't be out here with your pants hanging down, showing your drawers. I, I, we're living in a society where this is so norm to see grown men. Hey man, when I came up, man, our, our pants was up. Our underwear, that's why it's called underwear. They should be under your clothes, not advertised. Got you. We have, uh, Kay, I know Kay, you had a couple questions before the break. Well, I just had a comment about verbal abuse. Calling women whores and prostitutes at the pulpit is a form of verbal abuse. I would just like to say that if you did not know. But what are your uh, female clergies, what do they think about your, your remarks about women? The women, I have mixed reaction internationally. There's a lot of women that agrees that, yeah, well, he's calling a spade a spade. But you have- Or degrading. Do, do women find your remarks degrading? Oh, yes, some find it degrading. How about you, uh, Kay? Do you find his marks? It, it marks really degrading? doesn't. Uh, well, my opinion would be I don't want it to, you know, degrade you or say anything that would offend you, but I don't care w what he thinks. So it doesn't matter Whoa. to me. Well, see, I respect that. She don't care what I think. But okay. let me ask a question. Uh, do, do you have a daughter? I do not. You don't have a daughter. But my mo my grandmother, may she rest in peace, is uh, she actually led the women in ministry, Leslie, Lillian Fry Webb. Okay. Uh, if you had a daughter, would you rather have your daughter walk on the street half naked with a breast hanging out of course not i mean I, I'm, Why a woman, not? I'm a woman of certain morals and values so i know how to dress i know when is appropriate what not to do but i think that if you're going to judge a woman and she's in uh, she's at your church and she decides to go there and then you're criticizing her and demeaning her that's not a no, form of helping someone uh, basically I, I i totally disagree criticism there's constructive criticism constructive that, criticism is one thing but to criticize and demean is different well if you calling an individual by what they project to be how is that demeaning that is not by, demeaning. by how they dress how do you know what they are on the inside no basically i am not saying that they are a whore because of the way they dress i'm talking about it is the appearance if i came in here let me make it a good example okay again uh, again, if I came in here and rings on every finger like the bling bling preachers and had my hair process hanging down, you know, and this loud blood red suit and purple shoes and an apricot shirt. We would judge you. Bright yellow tie. Would you really believe I'm a man of God or would you believe I'm just a straight up pimp and just winning church business? To pimp. I'm going to think you're a pimp. Exactly. Let me ask you something, because we have B Expo coming up next Sunday. I mean, next Saturday. I, mm -hmm. I hope you can come. Uh, it's $15. I mean, I think you have that money. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> tickets, you can get them at rnbphilly.com. We have Albie Shore, Christopher Williams, Dougie Fresh, Roland Martin, Ernest Pugh, mm -hmm. uh, and we have Erica Campbell. Okay. E Erica Campbell's on our sister station, Praise 107.9. Mm -hmm. she, she does mornings as well. And she, you know, she's a gospel singer from Mary Mary, and mm -hmm. she dresses like this. Do you have a problem the way Erica Campbell, a woman of the Lord, dresses? Well, if I uh, didn't know that she said she was a Christian, by looking at her clothes, hugging her body, I wouldn't think so. I saw how, how uh, closely you were staring at that uh, <laughs> picture as well. I, I wouldn't think she's a Christian at all. As, if a woman is modest, she's not dressing in a manner that appears to be sexual. Like she's drawing sexual attention to herself. A woman body is sacred. The Bible speaks plain. Your body is the temple of the living God. 
And if our body, whether we are man or woman, if our body is a temple to, for the living God, then we should conduct our body in that manner. And when we walk in a public and people look at us, our women should not be on display. If you look at advertisement, what do they show you to get the product first? A female. To buy a soda, you got a female in a bathing suit. To get a car, you get a female in a bathing suit. Our women have been displayed as looking at a sex object. So therefore, when they buy things, they think it make it look sexy. Listen, God made you to be beautiful. And you don't have to go to Walmart to buy it. Speaking of beautiful, we have the B Expo. It's going down. I'm. Mean, this is just. It's. A, it's a lot. We. We have to. You know, curve this conversation right here. We can continue <laughs> the conversation on QHM show. But speaking of B Expo, uh, hopefully you'll come. Hopefully you'll come. You say it's Pugh. next week. It's next Saturday. Next Saturday, I'm gonna be out of town. Well, have your your body clone or, or your congregation <laughs> come out because we'll have Roland Martin, we'll have Erica Campbell, mm -hmm. who you are a fan of now, Dougie Fresh, <laughs> Kendrick, the Family Soul. Actually, we want to give out tickets right now. Call the number ten. Give us a call two one five five one five three four eight one. We want to thank you for coming by. Thank today. you for having me. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Pastor thank Gino you very Jennings. Much. And where's your, your our church located? Our church is 5105 North 5th Street, right on the corner of 5th and Lindley. But if you're in Jamaica, how many do you have in Jamaica? Close to 12 to 15 churches throughout Jamaica. Wow. You have, uh, okay, we'll talk about this. Maybe we can use it as a vacation home, go down and, you know. Thank you, Pastor <laughs> Jennings, for Thank coming to much. the Quincy Harris Morning Show with K-Fox. It is 857. We're still looking for caller number 10. If you want to go to B Expo, 215-515-3481. You all right with me, man. Appreciate it. The Truth of God now has the Holy Book of Scriptures in stock for immediate delivery. The Holy Book of Scriptures is a more complete collection of the books of the Bible with nothing tossed aside. Order now by going to the Truth of God website at www.truthofgod.com. For the price of $65, US you can have the Bible as it was meant to be. Order today at www.truthofgod.com and go to the red shopping cart on the left. All major credit cards and PayPal accepted.